Hello, everyone. This is the Believe in Bingo podcast. Solomon Wilcott's here. And look, I had to go into, that's right, the mailbag because we got tremendous response from you, our viewers, and our listeners to the Believe in Bingo podcast responding um, to my comments and to my commentary um, stating the fact that Joe Burrow is not injury prone. Well, boy, did that light up the internet because the people out there in the NFL world definitely responded. So we wanted to come back on and dip into the mailbag and sort of respond to some of the comments that are circulating across the internet. Uh, This one comes in courtesy of Disney Endings. What a Twitter handle, really? Couldn't you do better than that? All right, Disney Endings. He goes on to say, Come on, man. He is clearly injury prone. Doesn't mean that he isn't a great quarterback. He's top three in the National Football League. But stop it, man. He is injury prone. He has since his best chance to win a Super Bowl, though. Of course, Disney endings. Joe Burrow um, gives the Bengals an excellent chance to win a Super Bowl. He's already proven that. He also proven that he's not injury prone. I'm just going to say this, and I I can't say this or state this enough. Anyone who plays in the National Football League, it's only a matter of time. It's not about if you will be injured. It's about when, right? Now, you can go a 23-year career in the NFL, and guess what? You're going to have an injury. You can go three years in the NFL and have an injury. Everybody knows of Tom Brady being the greatest quarterback that the NFL has ever seen. That's right. He's the GOAT. Seven Super Bowl titles. Do you know that Tom Brady, what was it, 2007? Lost for the entire year. That's right. Game one, he gets his knee blown out. Does that mean he's an injury-prone guy? Does that mean that he's breakable or, you know, not tough, not physical? You play long enough, stuff is going to happen. It's almost like a fluke play. If somebody lands on your knee, While you're standing up throwing the ball, guess what's going to happen? Your ACL, your ligaments, and tendons are going to tear. That means you are not going to be able to get back out on that field until it's surgically repaired, which means you're going to miss time. Probably going to miss most of the season, if not all of the season. So it's happened to the great Tom Brady. It's happened to Joe Burrow. It's happened to Ben Roethlisberger. He's had uh, injuries and surgeries. Okay, let's go back. This one is going to be from Aaron Butler, 9373. And he says that Joe is the epitome of injury prone. He injured himself, of course, when he's had contact. He was injured when he had no contact. He got injured all four years. He was fortunate that he was injured in a calendar month. I don't know what that means. But he basically is saying, and you can tell he's a Ravens fan, he says Baltimore Ravens all day, every day. First of all, Aaron Butler, um, it's, you should just stop it at Aaron Butt. How about that? Aaron Butt with two Ts, because that's what it sounds like you're talking from right now, man. Joe Burrow has not been injured all four years in the NFL, right? He was injured twice his rookie year when he missed the final, what, five games, six games of the season. And then he was injured this past year during season number four. Then his second and third seasons, he played in every single game. That's right. Took the team to two straight AFC championship game. The one thing, hyperbole, just total hype. Your falsehood. That's why we're going to rename you Aaron Butts with two T's, Baltimore Raven fan. And then I'm just going to show you how inconsistent you are. Because our next uh, piece of mail, it comes from Shine for the Cam. Got to work on that Twitter name. Shine for the Cam says, Joe Burrow is not injury prone. Say that again. Joe Burrow is not injury prone. And if he's injury prone, then what about Lamar Jackson's injury? Okay, a lot of players get injured. (laughs) All right, Aaron Butts, how about that? Think about this. Lamar Jackson's first three seasons, 
He didn't miss a single game in the first three years that he played. And then in year four and five, he missed five games at the end of the 2021 season. He missed another five games at the end of the 2022 season. He missed 10 games over two seasons in 2021 and 2022. And then last year in 2023, he played in all 16, 17 games throughout the regular season. Took them into the playoffs where they were one and done, by the way. Lost at home to the Kansas City Chiefs in the uh, AFC title game. But Lamar Jackson missed 10 games in two seasons. Is he injury prone? I just want to know. Because Joe Burrow missed 13 games over four seasons. So Aaron Butts with two T's. If you're going to say that Joe Burrow's injury prone, then bruh, you got to say that your quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, is injury prone. Now, I'm not going to say that because he's not. Lamar Jackson's been durable. Lamar Jackson is, um, he's a running quarterback. He's a throwing quarterback. Joe runs it, not as much as Lamar. It's a physical game. And the guy who holds the ball on every single play, whether you're running it or throwing it, he touches the ball on every single play. The quarterback is susceptible to getting injured more than any other player on the field. The entire defensive unit, all 11 guys, every single week, you know he's targeting? You know the game plan says that, guy, we got to stop this guy? It's the quarterback, Aaron Butts, with two Ts. <sighs> I, don't, I don't even know what to do. I'm going to go back to the mailbag. This one is from Randy for me. We'll see about that, Randy for me. But he writes, if he had a good offensive line, he might have won a Super Bowl. This is coming from a Rams fan. He's got a point. Big respect for Joe Burrow. I like Randy for me. He's right. If we could block Aaron Donald, think about that. Cincinnati Bengals would have their Super Bowl ring. Joe Burrow would already have one and be working on two right now. Because last I recall in that Super Bowl, Jamar Chase is coming open. He's beating Jalen Ramsey like a rented mule, like he's a snare drum. He's got him beat. And here's Joe Burrow getting ready to cut it loose to his favorite target. But no, we decide we don't want to block Aaron Donald. We decide we're going to put a ring on Aaron Donald's finger. We decide we're going to send Aaron Donald to the Hall of Fame on this game alone. Because he was living in our backfield. That's right. He owned some real estate there. So, Randy for me, touche. Back to the mailbag. This one's coming from Periscotia. Coming now. Have no idea what you're talking about on that. But here's what he writes. The hit that blew out his knee during his rookie season and the burst appendix was unavoidable. Of course, that was in the second season. First of all, an appendicitis, that's a condition. It's not an injury. It's a, it's a condition. It's an illness. If you have a, an acute, um, say, kidney problem, are we going to say that, oh, he hurt himself? No. Are you going to say that he's injured? No. He's going to say he's sick. He's got an illness, and he's trying to recover. That's something that's outside of his hands, okay? So one of you, the haters in the world, who think that Joe Burrow is injury prone, you got to understand, a case of appendicitis is not an injury. It's an illness. It's a condition, okay? Uh, And God forbid that any of us are stricken with such illness. But he goes on to say, the calf strain, which we saw him occur in practice, during the 2023 season. The calf strain and the wrist tendon injuries indicate that his frame isn't as strong as Manning's, Marino, or Roethlisberger. Hyperbole at its best. How do, how do you know how strong some man's tendon is because it snapped because the 300-pound guy fell on you and you tried to brace yourself or you were falling? How do you know how strong of a tendon that Manning or Ben Roethlisberger or our, uh, our Dan Marino has. You don't know. That's, a, that's not a statement of fact. You're guessing. 
you're you're um you're you're literally exaggerating. You're it's prone to hyperbole. It's just spewing hype here. If you're gonna make an example, make one that could be clearly proven by a statement of fact, not a statement of something that's that's hocus pocus. I, I'm moving on. Moving on. The next one says, this might be a good one. Ty Kendall, 3750. He says, um, Cordell Volson is the second biggest lineman we have at 6'7, 330. That's our left guard. He is a big man. He said that Ted Karras is the smallest at 6'4, 300 pounds. He's right. He said, still a massive guy. But from left to right, this is how big the Bengals' offensive linemen are. Because people do like to blame the offensive linemen every time a quarterback gets sacked, which is the furthest thing from the truth. Sometimes it's the quarterback's fault. Sometimes it's the offensive line's fault. Sometimes it's the running back who's supposed to pick up the blitzing linebacker's fault because he released on a pass route when the pass protection called for him to stay in and pick up the blitzing linebacker. And we've had that happen, trust me. But here's how big and formidable the Bengals' offensive line is is now and will be at the start of the 2024 season. Orlando Brown, left tackle, 6'8", 340, massive man. Cordell Vosen, left guard, 6'7", 330, huge. Our center. Ted Karras, 6'4", 300. You should always know, centers have to be light. They have to be light on their feet, much more athletic. They've got to cover more space. They have to have better foot movement. And I'm across every offensive line in the National Football League, your center is going to be the smallest of the five guys. But I'll take a guy who's 6'4", 300 pounds as my center. In fact, I'll take Ted Karras into a knife fight down any dark alley any day of the week. He's bad dude. At right guard, 6'6", 315 pounds. Alex Kappa is a man. This guy's massive. 6'6", 315. And, he, and he's, not, he's massive, but he's not a fat boy. This guy's lean. Have you seen the waistline on this guy? He's like Andrew Whitworth. Big, but lean. You know what I mean? Whit was not a, a big chubby guy at all. Whit is a big athlete. All right. Right tackle. <laughs> the biggest of them all. Can you believe that Trent Brown, our right tackle, is bigger than our left tackle, Orlando Brown? Orlando Brown, 6'8", 340. Trent Brown, our right tackle, 6'8", 370. How about that, Jonah Williams? 6'8", 370. If anybody can get around this guy to sack our quarterback, I don't know what we're going to do. I got to give Mike Brown... Katie Blackburn and Troy Blackburn, all the credit in the world. They have gone out and they've looked under every rock in Tibet to find the best offensive lineman to improve our protection for our quarterback, Joe Burrow. We've done everything we can. We spent as much money as we can to improve this offensive line. Now, better days are ahead. Better protection for Joe Burrow are ahead. Gone are the flukish Injuries that occur to sack, the ones that we could control. To say that Joe Burrow is injury prone simply says you don't know what you're talking about. It's simply hyperbole. That's right. It's all hype, narrow as a pipe, lame, set up a frame, for clearly you've never been part of this game. So you're just like those pillows they used to sell over there at Bed Bath & Beyond. Soft as a feather. That's going to do it for today's show. This is the Believe in Bingo podcast. Yours truly, Solomon Wilcott. Don't forget, send more of your questions to our YouTube channel, or you can send them to my Twitter handle, at Solomon's Wisdom. We'll see you next time, everyone.